Welcome back to another hack rank video. Today we're going to be doing the plus minus problem. Let's get started. So to paraphrase what's going on here, we're going to be getting an array of elements um, from negative 100 to 100. And we're going to want to keep track of which ones are positive, which ones are negative, and which ones are zero. And at the end, we're going to be printing out the ratio of positives the ratio of negatives and the ratio of zeros. Uh, fairly straightforward. Um, one thing they do note is to uh, keep in mind precision problems. Um, <clears throat> the test cases are scaled to six decimal places, but they'll allow us an error up to 10 to the negative fourth. So we'll keep that in mind as we decide what data types to choose for this. So, <clears throat> over here on the right, let's begin to code this. So we're gonna need a variable to keep track of the number. Uh, let me back up here. The idea of this one is we're going to be looking at each element in the array, and then we're going to be figuring out if it's positive, negative, or zero. And initially, we're just going to keep track of how many fall into each category. Once we know how many fall into each category, we can then turn that into a ratio by dividing it by the total number of elements. <clears throat> so keeping that in mind, what we're going to want to do first is declare a variable for keeping track of the number of positives, and then another one for negatives and another one for zeros. I'm choosing to do decimal. Uh, we're coding this in C sharp and decimal has um, pretty high precision. Can't remember exactly what it is, but I think it's going to be our best bet for uh, precision. So we'll call this first one positives and we'll initialize it to zero. And the next one we'll take uh, for negatives, and finally one for zeros. And because we'll be accessing the length of the array quite frequently, let's also store that in a variable so we don't have to keep computing it. Um, I'm also just going to make this a decimal, which will help make finding the ratio a little easier. We won't have to do uh, some casts, which I'll explain a little bit later. So we'll call this length and we'll set it to equal arr dot length. Perfect. Next step would be to make a for loop which will go over oops, every element in arr. So for every element we're going to want to check if the element is negative or less than zero, then we will increase our negatives count. And we'll be using else if, so we don't have to continue doing comparisons if we reach a test case that returns true. So we'll say if the item that we're looking at is greater than zero, then we'll increment our positives. And if we don't find that it's negative or positive, we'll just assume that it's zeros because there's nothing else that it could be. Perfect. So that's all we need to do for the for loop. Uh, next, they want us to print out the ratios on C sharp. That will be with the console write line function. And <clears throat> let's see which one they want first. I think it's the positives. Yes, they want positives, then the negatives, then the zeros. So to compute the ratio, we're just going to say positives divided by the length of the array. And because we chose uh, decimals for everything, we don't have to do any casts. Um, if, the, if these were both integers, for example, which is probably what you would choose uh, 
intuitively for these guys because they should just be integers. What will happen is we'll get um, truncation going on here. And uh, because what we want is something capable of holding uh, a floating point value. But when you do an integer divided by an integer, it will give you an integer. So it'll chop off some of it to make it into an integer and we'll lose data and we'll get it wrong. So by choosing decimal for both of them, we don't actually have to worry about doing any casting right here. Uh, so that's nice. And finally, we'll compute the ratio of zeros in the array. Okay, that's it. Let's run the code. Make sure we didn't do anything incorrectly. Compilation error. Perfect. So let's see if we can catch it before we read the error. I'm not seeing it. So let's see here. Name zero does not exist. Ah, right there. I need the S. All right, now let's try it. All right, so we're passing both test cases. One thing you'll notice though is that our output is uh, not as nice and neat as theirs. So let me show you a quick trick in C Sharp to do this. This is, I believe, I can't remember when this came out, C Sharp 6 or so. But we're going to be using the string interpolation operator. To do that, you just put the uh, dollar sign in front of your string literal. And then any variable that you want to use inside of your string, you just have to surround it with curly brackets. And then to specify a format, you do the colon and we'll say floating point five. And there's a whole bunch of or six. There's a whole bunch of these that you can do and it makes it just really clean, really simple. Before this string interpolation operator, you had to either use like string format or like pluses and just your strings got really kind of muddy, kind of unreadable. So this is something that's just great. I like using it. And if you've never seen it or never have used it, I encourage you to go look up the documentation on it. So now you can see that our output matches exactly the expected output and is now formatting them as a floating point out to uh, six places. So that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching.